Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott, and today we're going to be animating our fish from the sea shack scene. We'll be practicing using bones, weight painting once again, and talking about parenting with lots of tips and tricks as usual. So if you're following along, you're probably somewhere around here where you've got some animated waves and an animated flag, and today we're working on the fish. So I'll go across to layout mode and pause the animation. My screencast keys will be down on the bottom left, and let's hide the water so we can see our fish. So I'm going to zoom in on one of my fish, full stop or period key on the numpad, and let's have a look at our fish. Now it's much easier, I think, if your objects are linked together. So I'm going to select all these and control J to join. If for some reason that doesn't work, and that is the case sometimes, and I'll show you with this fish over here, there may be just one of your objects that's causing problems. So select two, control J, shift select the next one, control J, and go along until you find out what that problem is. Then once you've identified it, you can figure it out. Sometimes it's a modifier or something strange like that that's causing problems. Or you may have even selected something in the background. Anyway, I'm going to delete this fish because I don't, because I don't need it and it might get in the way. I'm going to use this one here. Now, if you haven't made a fish yet, it's fairly easy to model. Just a plane in the background and a few icospheres with some tiny cylinders there. So you shouldn't find that too difficult at this stage. I'm going to isolate that with forward slash on my numpad. And let's just go into top view and I'm going to rotate it so it's in line with the Y axis. Now I've just noticed as I did that movement, it added some keyframes and I've accidentally left record on. Common beginner mistake and just everyone mistake. So I'll turn record off and with my mouse in the timeline, press delete keyframes. You may not have the summary open, so you just make sure you've got that disclosure arrow ticked. But if you see a keyframe there, you need to delete it and turn record off. So let's go into edit mode and just tidy up the tail a bit. I can hover over the tail and press L for linked, and then I can scale all these in the X axis. So scale X zero, and that will flatten them out, and then I can grab them and move them into position. There we go. Now it's all straight and flat. Back to top view. I might as well select it all and scale it in the X. So it's not quite so wide. I should have done that in wireframe. So wireframe, select all, scale in the X. So it's a slightly thinner fish and it will wave a bit better. Back to solid mode and back to object mode. And let's go to top view to add our bones. So I'm going to animate this using bones. Shift right click at the front there because that will be my root bone. The front of the fish I believe doesn't move that much. So that's a good place for a root bone to be. And by the root bone, it's the parent of all the other bones. So you move that root bone, it moves everything. So back into top view, shift A to add, and we go down to armature. Now the bone's pointing upwards at the moment. So into edit mode, let's go to side view this time with three on my numpad and move it into position. So G to grab that end piece and it's gone behind my fish, what a pain. Now I should have said this last time, but the flag obviously didn't get in the way. But you need to go over to the object menu here and under viewport display there's in front and you'll always see it in front then so let's move this into position by clicking the parts of the bone and moving them around with g to grab e to extrude out and i can constrain it to the y-axis in this case e then y e then y and e then y and just even these out just a touch somewhere around there is fine Okay, back to top view. Let's make sure they're roughly in the middle. That's great. So we need to combine our fish and our bones. So select the fish first, shift select the bones. Now they are the active object. So that's what we're parenting to. Control P to parent and with automatic weights. If you don't see that, you may have selected them in the wrong order. Click on that. Now we can click on our bones and go to pose mode. Up the top there and see how we've got on and it's all working fairly well. So I'll just undo that. But we might want to take a look at our weights. So we have to go to edit mode and lock object modes in order to keep the bones in pose mode. Someone told me we didn't have to do that, but I haven't found a way to do it without unticking this. So I'm going to do that. Now I can select on my fish whilst the bones are still in pose mode and go to weight paint. And let's have a look. So we can see that this front bone is not affecting the eyes at the moment. Control click on the next bone. That seems okay. That's a bit too far. That one's not doing much. And that one's not doing much. Okay, so we do need to affect our weight painting a bit. So let's control click on the front bone. Go to the active tool settings here. Put the weight up to one. And paint in 
full weight for these guys. Now this isn't quite working, so I'll tell you why. I'm going to go back to object mode for now. Now we can see the shading on this eyeball seems a bit strange. And we can probably see that more closely if I go to the overlays here and turn on face orientation, we can see that this one, its orientation is facing inwards. So when you try and paint any weights or even textures for that matter, it's painting them on the inside and it's all going a bit wrong. So the first thing we need to do is into edit mode and shift N to recalculate the normals. Now that has turned my tail around, but that doesn't matter because that's a flat object. So it shouldn't make too much difference for that one, but all the rest are fine. We still have another problem that it's actually slightly awkward to paint these vertices inside the eyeball. Let's have another quick go. So I'll quickly turn the face orientation back off, back into weight paint mode and try and paint now. Now I can paint the eyeball okay. And I am able pretty much to select them. Although there we go, I can't select those ones and paint them with my paintbrush. And that's a problem you get when you overlap your objects like this. So there's a vertices inside this one. It doesn't matter too much for low poly animations like this, and it won't cause us too many problems, except when we try to do something like weight painting. Don't worry though, because we can go into edit mode, into wireframe mode. Cool, it's tricky to see, but I can just about see them up there. You could try x-ray mode as well, but I want to select those vertices around here. In fact, C to circle select, and let's just select them all, that's better. Now I want to manually type in the weights for these from this bone. So weight painting, you can sort of paint them in, but we can just type in a value for them. We go across to the object data over here and with bone zero selected, this is obviously the first bone I made, so it's just bone nothing. We can change the weight here and we want a full weight of one and we want to assign it to these vertices, so assign. Remember to be in vertex mode because it does affect the vertices, not the faces or edges. So now with that assigned, we should be able to go back to weight paint mode, back to solid mode over here, and now we can see it's all red. So you can manually assign vertices to bones. Very handy. So three to go to side view, let's choose the next bone. Control right click. Back over to our active tool and maybe put this down to zero and just get rid of the stuff around here. And maybe a little bit around here. It doesn't matter if it overlaps slightly because you can be fairly rough with these things and you'll see what I mean in a second. But there's no real need for it to have much influence over there. Control left click on this one. I can take the influence of away from these vertices. And if it's causing you problems, you may have to paint on the other side because that's where the normals were reversed. Maybe a bit more in here. Next bone, control left click. That's not got much at all. Let's just paint in there and there. Next bone, paint those last vertices and we're there, I think. Let's just quickly check across them all. That's all looking pretty okay. You can also rotate them in this mode to see the effects it's having. So here I could take some off the eyeballs, but I'm not too worried at this stage. Let's undo that rotation and back to object mode. So our fish is ready for animation. Let's click on our bones, go to side view, and let's go to pose mode. It looks like they're slightly rotated, so I'll select them all and Alt R to remove any rotations. There we go. And let's put my playhead back to the start. Now what I've done is quickly typed into Google fish animation reference and I'll show you what I've come up with. This one I think is pretty handy. I'm going to take this one for my beginning, this one for my middle, and this one for my end, and that should be a nice, simple animated fish. You can go a bit more complicated and have these in-between ones if you really like. But it's really helpful to have these sort of animation references, especially as a beginner animator. So with that off to one side, let's start animating. So into top view with seven, and let's set up the first frame. Press rotate on the first one and mimic that shape that we saw earlier. That's the first frame, but nothing's appearing. That's because I haven't turned record on. So I need to select all my bones and press I insert rotation keyframe. And now I might as well press record so that it records my movement from now on. So we want this to be a looping animation. So the end frame ought to be about 25 and then we can loop it 10 times in our 250 frames. So shift D to duplicate that frame across to 25. Let's zoom in a bit on my timeline and make sure that's a 25, no problem. And then roughly the middle frame, somewhere around there, we can shift it across to the other side. And there we have a very simple swimming fish. 
Now you might want to go a bit more detailed with yours and therefore you can copy one of the animation references online. But for the sake of the tutorial, I'm just going to keep mine simple. And my fish in the animation at the beginning had exactly this. So you don't need to go too detailed when they're low poly like this and seen from a distance. Anyway, last time I showed you how to copy and paste these keyframes so they loop all the way through. There's a much easier way. So I'm going to introduce you very briefly to the graph editor, just here. Pull this up so you can see it. And with just this bone selected, you can see that the graph editor has all the information on what's been keyframed, and it shows you graphs in terms of the movement as well. I won't go into too much detail, but the simple thing you can do is select them all. Although actually I need to select all my bones first, so they all cycle. So select all your bones first, select all the keyframes, or you can press A. Shift E is the shortcut here, and make cyclic. And there we go. When I press play, you can see it looks more like a dog at the moment, but it's fine and works well in the animation. And it loops nicely. So let's come out of isolation mode at the moment. I've still got my C hidden though, and I wanted to go around in a circle. That way I can loop my animation at 250 frames nice and easily. If I have it just swimming across to one side, I have to make sure it comes back to exactly the same point. So a simple circle will do. You can of course change your circle and modify it so they swim around a bit more, but I'll just stick to a basic circle. Back into object mode, let's go to top view for this and shift A to add a curve circle. Make sure it's a curve circle, not a mesh circle. I'm going to pull this down again, and I'll put this back to timeline, as that's easier to understand. And also, I'm going to turn record off as well, so when I move things around, they don't animate. Let's scale that up to about there, and that's going to be my rotation path. Now, do be aware that I have changed the scale, and that might affect any objects that are parented to it. Now, how do I get my fish to follow this path in a circle? Well, it's actually a bit awkward to select a bone, and then have that parented to my circle because I keep having to go into pose mode with the bones and it's a bit awkward. So a far better way is to create an empty, parent the bones to the empty, and then the empty follows the circle. I'll show you what I mean. Shift A, empty, plane axis, and make sure it's roughly in the same place as your bones. Select your bones, the empty, and control P. So the empty was the active object there. And just press object. Now when I move my empty, the whole fish moves but I can go in and animate these bones if I need to. Back into object mode. And now I want to join this empty to the circles. So select the empty first, the circle second, and control P, follow path. Now, if you don't get follow path, it may be that you've got a mesh circle or you may have selected them in the wrong order. Now at the moment, my empty is right in the middle. So it's just going to rotate like this. And also it's only going to 100 frames. So let's click on the curve quickly and change that. Scroll down to path animation and change that to 250 or the length of your animation. And then let's go to top view and move our empty. Now that black line, if I select just the empty that is, that black line that you can see is where it will be along the path. And you can offset it like this or have it directly over the top. I'm going to rotate it so it's in line with the path. I have got, if I click on the path, and back down to path animation, I have got follow on. So you can see it following the circle and swimming around and it looks just fine. Now, if I want to do another fish, I can select those fishy bits, the bones, the empty and the fish, shift D to duplicate and offset it somewhere. And you can see that black line again. But when I press play, they're offset and moving around. And for the sake of my animation, I'm fine that they copy each other, but you could easily go in and adapt one of the animations slightly so they look slightly different. And then you can copy and paste these around and you've got some nice swimming fish. Okay, so that's some swimming fish for you. I think they look rather nice. Let me know how you get on in the comments below. And until next time, thanks for watching.